Hi there guys and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to look at picking and picking technique. So I've had a lot of comments and messages about my picking that I use in my videos which is very nice and I thank you all for that. Uh, something I really enjoy working on and something I continue to work on every day. So today I'm going to give you a general overview um, and just give you five pointers, tips, whatever you want to call them um, to look at with your picking that hopefully will help you as they did for me. And they're all areas that I use now or things that I've sort of discovered in my years of playing the guitar. So let's get on to the first one. So tip number one and possibly the most crucial element is to make sure you're using the right pick for the job. So I'm relating this video today on picking technique more for the rock and metal styles where you're playing faster lines, using alternate picking and general fast picking technique. So in general, in my experience, I've found that harder picks are definitely, definitely the way to go for this style of playing. Anything from one, one and a half mil up to about two mil, which I find is super, super thick. But recently over the last good, got two, three years, I've settled on Jazz 3 Extra Large Altex from Dunlop. Um, they're about a millimetre thick, they last a really long time. As well as this, they're also the normal length of a standard plectrum. So they're not super, super short like a Jazz 3 traditionally is. But what that means is they're the normal size of a plectrum, but they're slightly wider this way. And that gives you a really great grip on the pick, which gives you plenty of control. And they just feel really, really nice. They're a great material, they slip over the strings nicely, and they're a great plectrum. So tip number two is going to be how we actually grip the pick. So this is one that comes from my own playing experience and I can remember playing roughly two or three years. And I used to hold the plectrum between the end of my thumb and like the point of my finger. I and mean, this was at the stage when I was just getting into sort of metal riffs and things like that. I and mean, it became quite hard moving on to the lead and sort of playing. And this is where this new pick grip, which I still use now, came into play massively and was a huge game changer for me. So to break things down, I take my pointing finger here, curl it down like so, place the pick on top and then grip it with the pad of the thumb there. And what this should leave you with is the plectrum, just the point coming out the side of the thumb like this, almost like a little axe. And this is something you've probably seen loads of guitar players do, uh, it's an incredibly popular method, but for those learning, it might not be 100% obvious at the time and it was a huge, huge game changer. So over the previous way that I picked that I talked about just now, this gave me a hell of a lot more control over the pick and ultimately over my playing. Having the thumb on top of the pick there kept it incredibly sturdy, gave me a fantastic grip on the plectrum and overall just a lot more control when it came to getting into more intricate riffs and lead playing. So tip number three is going to be about picking motion. So one important change that happened in my playing a good few years ago was to break away from the general wrist technique of picking and start to utilize the finger and the thumb to generate picking motion. So this technique is achieved by pushing the pick in and out with the thumb and the finger by bending and straightening the thumb. And what this gives you is a very small picking motion but this is the perfect amount of motion to pick each note especially when you're playing faster rock and metal lead lines. So the way this technique works is when you're pushing the pick out you're generating a downstroke on the string and then when you bring the pick back in by bending the thumb, you've got your upstroke. So in a very small movement there, you've got your downstroke and your upstroke, and you've had to move your hand in a very, very minimal way. So the first advantage is that there's a lot less movement going on in the picking hand. And this means that it's a lot less tiring for the hand when you're playing for a longer period of time. So the second advantage in relation to the lack of movement in this technique relates to controlling string noise. Now having a lot less movement means it's a lot more manageable to control this string noise and have an overall cleaner technique. So this is a technique that I really enjoy using, uh, something I've worked on and continue to work on on a regular basis. And I'm gonna talk about a few of the players that have influenced me with this technique a little later in the video. One change that made a huge difference to my playing 
was where my hand was in relation to the guitar, and in particularly where these fingers were on the picking hand that weren't being used for picking. Now originally, in the first few years when I started, I used to like resting these two fingers on the body of the guitar, otherwise known as anchoring. This is something that a lot of people do to good effect, but I found that it was made a huge difference to my playing when I started to not do that and keep these three fingers above the guitar. Firstly, it made a big difference in that I started to get into something I use a lot now, which is hybrid picking. So having these three fingers above the guitar keeps them in perfect position whenever I want to go into some series of hybrid picking licks. The other big change it made was I found that it kept my picking hand at a much better angle and it made it a lot easier to play cleaner as opposed to pulling the plectrum down to where those fingers were anchored. Now having the picking hand completely hovering above the guitar and picking is tricky in itself. So that meant that at some point on the body of the guitar and on my hand, I needed to rest somewhere. And this is what I'm gonna move on to next. With tip number four, where we're gonna look at muting. So moving on from the anchor technique and the unanchored technique, I began to rest with the fleshy part of my palm on the bridge of the guitar. So having the palm here means I'm able to palm mute most of the low strings at any time when doing single note lines. And this helps to keep things really, really clean. So having the hand rested at this point on the bridge allows you to keep the bass strings nice and muted when you're using the higher strings. As well as this, when it comes to using licks that use all six strings, all the licks that use the lower strings, you're also able to keep those to a degree palm muted, which helps to keep them nice and clean and it helps to keep noise manageable on the guitar. So when you begin to focus on really clean picking technique and fast playing, palm muting is something you can use a lot when you first start. And then gradually you can start to bring the hand further back on the bridge and rely less on the muting technique and more on your control of the guitar to make sure that you've got a nice clean technique and all the notes you're playing are coming out nicely. So tip number five is gonna be to make sure you've got a good idea in your head of what you wanna sound like. So in order to do this, something that really helps is to make sure you can really listen to as many players as possible, watch some videos on them, and really gain some influence from some of the guys that are already doing the sort of playing that we're talking about today. So running across the bottom of the screen now is a good few players that really influenced me still today. Um, some of which you would have heard of for sure, some of which you might have not done. But all of these guys really influenced me to practice the things that I needed to practice to gain the picking technique and sound that I was looking for. So my personal preference for the playing is the really nice tight picking runs. I'm utilizing alternate picking. And I also really like it when the notes are really staccato faster runs. So I like to incorporate a lot of muting into my playing. And that's just a few things that combine to get the sort of playing that I'm interested in. Obviously everyone's gonna have different things that they like, different opinions on that. But it's really good to listen to a broad range of players and really take as many things possible that you can from their techniques and the way they go about their playing. So as an extra tip to go along with all these ones and a general one for pretty much anything you'll learn on guitar is just to take your time with it. Start super slowly and build your way up really, really slowly in small increments and you will get there eventually. So super, super important with this style of playing that you're not blindsided by the speed of the play. There's two main things that you need to look at in this sort of playing, one of which is the speed, but more importantly on top of that and overall importance is the clarity. Really focus on playing clean notes, clean lines, and keeping everything as clean and relaxed as possible. And then from there, you can start to bring the tempo of what you're learning up and eventually get that speed you're after. You just need to take the time. So that just about wraps up my brief overview on my picking and a few of the tips that I'm gonna give you guys. Hopefully that answers a few of the questions in the comments. As always, if you've got any more, please feel free to put them in there and send me any messages or anything. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoy this sort of content. Um, I really enjoy making the lesson content and I'm really hoping that you guys find it useful. I've had some good feedback so far. Please subscribe for more, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys very soon.